Okay, lend me your ear. Okay. <clears throat> so, here is your ear. It's a beautiful ear. The ear has three main regions. We have the outer ear, which is going to be from here to here. So the outer ear, the middle ear, which is going to be here to here. Okay, so this part here is the middle ear. And the inner ear is going to be the structures from here inward. Okay. So let's start with the structure that is here. So this, uh, this structure is called the the penna or the oracle. The penna or the oracle. Not oracle as in like O, but oracle, like A-U-R-I-C-L-E. So the oracle. Okay. Now the oracle is going to assist with capturing the sound waves and funneling those sound waves into the external auditory canal. So this is the external auditory canal. All right. <clears throat> so the external auditory canal and the pinna or the auricle are going to be the two structures that you need to know for the outer ear. Now, as the sound wave travels down the external auditory canal, it is then going to hit what we call the tympanic membrane. Okay, the tympanic membrane. Now the tympanic membrane so you can see some of her here. So the tympanic membrane. Now the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane is going to define basically where we begin the middle ear. So the structures of the middle ear are going to be the tympanic membrane. This is colloquially called the eardrum. The sound waves are gonna cause the, in, the eardrum, the eardrum or uh, the tympanic membrane is a membrane and the membrane's very thin and it's gonna vibrate. Okay, you know when you're when you have your speakers loud and you put your hand on the speakers and they vibrate? This does the same thing. It's gonna to vibrate to detect those sound waves coming into the ear. As the tympanic membrane is vibrating due to the sound waves, it is connected. It's connected to three uh, ear bones and they're called ossicles. Ossicles just means tiny bones. Ossicles. Okay. We have three ear ossicles. We call this the malleus, the malleus, and the malleus is connected to the next small bone or ossicle of the middle ear, which is the incus, the incus, okay, and then the incus is connected to the stapes, the stapes. Let me take this apart so we can see some of these structures a little bit better. So here I have taken off the tympanic membrane. Okay, so the tympanic membrane is situated like this. The sound waves come in and they're going to vibrate the tympanic membrane. When the tympanic membrane vibrates, the, um, the first bone that vibrates that is attached to the uh, eardrum is going to be number 12 here. So this is the tympanic membrane and number 12 on this model. So this bone here, okay, that's the malleus. The bone next to it, this is the incus, the incus, and the incus has this little, uh, little tiny thing here which is the connection for the next bone. In this model, they have them separated, but they're connected in the body. Okay, so eardrum, malleus, sorry, malleus, incus, and then the incus. So when this is intact, so when it's intact, that incus is going to attach to the third ear ossicle and let me take these off so you can see it. So here is the incus right here, okay? And that's gonna connect with this bone here. So when the malleus moves, the incus moves, and when the incus moves, the stapes moves, okay? So on this model, the stapes is right here. It's shown as number 13, okay? So that is the stapes. And you can kind of see why they call it the stirrup. Now, the 
stapes is connected to the oval window. Okay. So the oval window is this structure here, the oval window. Now keep in mind though that the structures of the middle ear are going to include, so the structures of the middle ear, so go like this, are going to include the tympanic membrane, the malleus, the incus, the stapes, so even though they're separated in the model. So those are the structures of the middle ear. Now, the stapes connected to the oval window, and the oval window is a membrane, okay? It's a membrane that is attached to the vestibule. So this kind of, kind of this base region here, so all of this, this kind of base whole area here is called the vestibule. The vestibule. So the oval window is part of the vestibule. When when the tympanic membrane vibrates, all three of those in those uh, middle ear ossicles are also going to vibrate. The malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Since the stapes is connected to the oval window, the stapes is going to start pushing on the oval window. Now inside of this structure that I'm holding, this is an aqueous environment inside here. So I'm going from a, a medium of air where the sound waves are coming in as air and then I have to have enough pressure to push on this oval window to move the liquid inside of this structure. So the reason that we have those, those ossicles, it actually amplifies the signal. And it's actually very important. Okay. So the whole function of having those inner ear, middle ear ossicles, sorry, um, is to um, to amplify the sound because the tympanic membrane. I mean, it's just vibrating due to air, but we need to have enough pressure to really move the liquid inside of this entire structure. Okay. All right. So the base of this structure is called the vestibule. The function of the vestibule is uh, linear acceleration. We'll talk more about that. So this is um, like if you jump out of an airplane, that sensation, that's coming from your vestibule, okay? If you're shooting up in a rocket really fast, that sensation comes from the vestibule. We have these canals here, these circular structures. There are three of them, okay? These are the semicircular canals. And for once, we actually have a name that makes a lot of sense in English. Yay! So enjoy it while it lasts because it doesn't come around very often, right? So these are the semicircular canals. Our sensation of rotational motion, rotational motion is going to be sensed by the semicircular canal. So linear motion is vestibule. Rotational motion is sensed by the semicircular canal. And you're like, wait a minute, I thought the ear did auditory processing. It does, don't worry, we're getting to that now. Those other structures I just talked about are all part of the vestibular nervous system. Now we have this uh, structure here. So here, just to give you some orientation again. So here is that stapes, okay? Here is the vestibule. All right, here's our semicircular canals. And then I have this shell-like structure called the cochlea, the cochlea. So. The cochlea is what holds the auditory receptors. So the auditory receptors here are going to sense the waves, those liquid waves, the disturbance or vibrations in that wave uh, caused by the stapes pushing on the oval window. Okay. And it is this uh, snail-like or shell-like uh, structure, which is why it gets its name cochlea. Um, so the auditory receptors are here. The auditory receptors are hair cells, okay? And they're going to send their information. They're gonna code that information in the form of action potentials. And they're gonna send that information to the brain. And how they do that is they send the information to the brain using the auditory nerve, the auditory nerve. Okay. And then the auditory and vestibular nerve come together to form the vestibulocochlear nerve, the vestibulocochlear nerve. So, but after the stapes, all of these other structures, this is all considered inner ear. 
Now there's one more structure of the middle ear that I skipped that I need to go back to. And that is, this is your eustachian tube, the eustachian tube. And what this does is this equalizes pressure. Going into uh, up into the mountains or in an airplane, the higher elevations, this is going to assist with re-equalizing that pressure in the, in the ear. Okay, all right. And that is everything for that.